this topic should be a very interesting one because we're talking about orgasms. And I'm curious to know from you guys what makes you orgasm, right? I think we all have different things that get us off, turn us on for females, get us wet, get us stimulated. For men, get you hard, right? That's the part of the arousal phase of the sexual response cycle before you actually reach the peak orgasm and then you release, right? So let's talk about this. This video obviously is for mature audiences only. Um, you guys know that I'm very comfortable with my sexuality, so I feel like I can be open and honest and express that with you guys amongst a mature audience of people who are also comfortable in their sexuality, right? So let's do this. Now, <laughs> I must say, this video was inspired by conversation. A lot of my videos are inspired by conversations that I have, right? That get me to think. And so, and I wouldn't be surprised if the person who I had this conversation with is watching this video or may see this video. But you guys, I mean, it goes without saying, right? Like being an author, being a writer, and also being a content creator, what do you expect? <laughs> what do you expect, right? So, it came up in our discourse where we were just talking about what we wish, right? What we wish for, what we like, what we desire. And obviously, me being a submissive, I like dominant men. I like dominant men, men who take control, not only just in the bedroom, because you have your bedroom doms that you think they're doing a big to-do by being able to dominate a woman in the bedroom, and I think like most men can do that, right? Well, can they? Can, I like, it's funny because that's kind of what we're talking about in this video. Are like most men dominant in the bedroom? Because it seems to be that men like women to take control of their own orgasm. Like, that's the first time I heard it put that way. But it's basically saying that you want a woman to do most of the work in the bedroom while you just sit back and get your rocks off, right, and get pleased. I don't know if I agree with that. I'm just going to have to just put it out there. I don't know if, if I agree with that. I mean, I know I don't agree with that, right? Um... I don't agree with that for different reasons that I will share here. Obviously, it makes sense. Like, me being a submissive, that doesn't really quite work. Being in control of my own orgasm doesn't really work with submissives. And since we're talking about dominance and submission, right? And like I said, I'm attracted to doms, not just bedroom doms, because that's a whole thing. And... The idea as to are most men just bedroom doms? There's a freaking bug, y'all. Excuse me if y'all see me like swatting things, but <laughs> it's like, are most men bedroom doms? And then it started makes me wonder, right? Because at, at one point, a lot of men who claimed to be dominant were really just bedroom doms. And then now you see a wave where men aren't even really being bedroom doms anymore, right? They want to be dominated. They want to be fucked. <laughs> and listen, I'm not here to judge, right? To each his own. But we're talking about orgasms and what gets you off. Everyone has their thing that they like. Everyone has their certain, their niche, right? Sexual desires, fantasies, things that pleasure them, things that make them feel good in the bedroom and outside the bedroom. For me, I've already admitted that. Of course, I'm a sapiosexual, so... Being that it doesn't take, I mean, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me be, let me be very specific. It does, it takes a certain type of uh, person, it takes a certain type of wit, I think, of a man to be able to dominate a woman on the intellectual level. That's very difficult. But they do exist. 
But I think even so with those type of men, they're not really alpha. They're not really dominant. You can be like intellectually smart, right? And be able to hold a conversation with the woman. And that turns me on. I'm curious to hear like what turns you guys on when it comes to anything, like as it, as it relates to intimacy. What turns you on? What gets what gets you going? For me, a good intellectual conversation, right? But only that, like I think it's just the energy of a man that knows how to lead. He's not afraid to take the lead in the relationships. Particularly outside of the bedroom and inside the bedroom. It's going to be interesting. Now, with that whole conversation coming up, right? That perspective of... <laughs> he said he would like for a woman to take control of her orgasm. Let's break that down a bit. Now, on the surface level, it's kind of clear that... He isn't a dominant man, right? And we were talking about this in the context of dominance and submission. Because he was asking me about my proclivities to BDSM. And I was sharing this with him. I like to talk about BDSM, clearly, right? And, you know, he shared, like, what turns him on. And I'm like, okay. I think... For him to word it that way, it was almost as if he was doing me a favor or doing a favor in the mind of a submissive woman. So I'm like, that's a trick way of like wording it, right? To say that, oh, you would like for a woman to be in control of an orgasm. But basically, you just want to get fucked by a woman. You want her to do most of the work. And I'm just like, ah, ah. <laughs> not my thing at all. And I'm just thinking about orgasms, right? And what like makes a woman orgasm. And the fact that most women don't really orgasm during sex. They don't really reach the point of orgasm. I think, let's just pause right there. That's pretty sad. That most women don't reach orgasm. Is it because women rely upon men to make them orgasm? They put that burden of responsibility on a man. Like it's a man's job to deliver in the bedroom, right? And to make a woman orgasm. Is that the reason why women don't reach orgasm? Because most men, when they have sex, they fucking orgasm. Every time they freaking come, usually... They orgasm simultaneously, right? When they ejaculate. So, it makes you wonder. It makes things that make you go, hmm. But when you think of, I think of like the dynamic, right? Think of like what constitutes an orgasm. What is necessary? What must be in place for an orgasm to take place within a woman, and I can speak for myself, right? Being a woman. Thinking back, because if you ask most women, and you ask them, have you ever really orgasmed? Some may say, yeah, yeah, a lot of women fake orgasms though, right? But most women haven't really experienced an orgasm, and to be honest, in my going on 38 years of living, I don't think it should come as a surprise that I only really experienced orgasm like one time through intercourse. Now, when a woman is stimulated, like when her clitoris is stimulated, usually through self-masturbation, she orgasms every single time. It's a fail-safe way to orgasm, right? When you're in control, when a woman's in control of her orgasm by stimulating herself, by masturbating, right? But that makes me also wonder, like, what's the point in even being with a man if I'm responsible for my own orgasm, right? Like, that's the whole point of intimacy, being stimulated by your partner because it delivers a certain type of energy, a certain feeling that you that is elicited when 
a person is contributing to this arousal that you feel that leads to the big boom, the orgasm. So it's just like, what is the point in even engaging in intercourse if I'm solely responsible for my own orgasm? I'm <laughs> like, what? Like, I can be doing this by myself. And if anything, I think that's what contributes to sexual frustration because it's almost like there is a degree of uh, selfishness that is brought into relationships, right? And they're really just situationships where two people, you know, man and woman are coming together to have sex. It's just like, it's kind of a degree of vanity. It's just like, what are we doing here, you know? And it becomes like pointless, I think, in my my eye, you know? It's just, it's pointless. It's like, okay, what's what's the point here? So... When I think about that one time that I had an orgasm, it's all mental. It's, re it's really mental. And I think very few men have the ability to be able to master like what it takes to bring a woman to that point of having a, a full body orgasm. <laughs> that takes this very special type of man, I think. Because you really have to be in tune with your partner. And in tune, first of all, I think with yourself. And then in tune with your partner to be able to know what it is that turns your partner on. And how to stimulate your partner in different ways. And when I talk about mental domination, what I'm really talking about is mental stimulation, right? Because through that mental stimulation, you trigger certain physiological responses within a woman. You can really make a woman lubricate just through mental stimulation, which I think a lot of men don't get. And it creates a buildup. It creates this anticipation. It's just like, yo, it's sad that a woman has to come on here and bring y'all game. But I feel like, why not? I'll be the one to, to bring it to you guys and just to share, right? Because I do like to share things. And it's just like to build that anticipation. Some men are so in a rush to have sex. They're so in a rush to get there that I think they miss out on a lot. And, and they miss out on being able to please their partner because in pleasing your partner, that is reciprocated. And it just enhances your degree of pleasure when it comes to your orgasm, when it comes to your sexual experience as a man. But if you're just going in it with the idea that a woman is responsible for her own orgasm, you want your partner, your female partner, to be in control of her own orgasm, and you feel like, all right, I'm your only duty is just to come in, lay there, and and get your dick sucked, and that's it. Like that type of relationship would be for you anyway. I think, all right? I'm speaking. I'm speaking on behalf of men who are actually dominant men, or who crave to dominate a woman, not just sexually, but all the way around, right? Mentally, emotionally. In a healthy way. We're not talking about some freaking abuse or anything of that sort. And so thinking about an orgasm in that sense, right? And being able to make a woman, a, a female who gets off on being dominated, a submissive woman. How you a man can go to that point, it really, like I said, it starts in the mind. It's like a very nuanced type of interaction that is nurtured between this man and a woman. And it takes course over a period of time. Getting to know, that's what real intimacy is, right? And people think that, oh, they're having sex. It's like, are you really having sex? Do you even know what sexual exchange is, right? Energy exchange is. A lot of people don't. They think it's just like freaking body parts coming together. And then fluids being released. It's just like, it goes deeper than that. I think a lot of people are really afraid to really engage in sexual energy exchange because with that comes an attachment. 
And with attachment comes vulnerability. People are afraid of vulnerability because why? They're afraid of getting hurt or getting betrayed by someone. I get it. I absolutely get it. But it takes it to a whole nother level. Like when you can make a person just by looking at them, you can make something change within their, their biology, within their physiological response. That's powerful. Just by glancing at them. Right? What do you want to get to that point in a relationship or an interaction with the person, right? It, just by being able to look at them. Being able to just say a few words and then a woman becomes lubricated. That's very sophisticated, though. A lot of people, a lot of men, like, aren't patient enough. They're, they aren't really, like, in tune with themselves, let alone, like, their partner to be able to reach that point of intimacy, of ecstasy. You can get there, though. And it's really not that complicated. It's not that complicated, but if you're selfish, then it could be complicated. And so, yeah, I was, like, thinking back to, like, the orgasm, it's just that mental stimulation and once you achieve that and I think men know what I'm talking about like true dominant men know what I'm talking about being able to reach that point of stimulating a woman mentally that you can almost see like her giving up her you can see her becoming vulnerable you can see like the defenses slowly dropping because everyone, we all have defenses, right? Especially when you meet someone you don't know and, you know, people feel uncomfortable. Like, the, the awkward phase, right, of getting to know a person, it's just like, it feels weird, right? People kind of are detached. But when you are becoming intimate with a person, you spend time, you get to know a person, and you've reached that level of mental stimulation, you'll begin to see those defenses slowly drop her defenses, you begin to see her become more relaxed. And knowing how to read her body language is really, really important. Picking up on her body language and knowing like when to go when. Like I said, I think this is really important. It's very vital. Because some men go in too quick. You can just, you can ruin the whole moment. And that moment, because I think every sexual encounter that a man has with a woman, it lays the foundation for any consecutive interactions that he may have or may not have because he fucked the first one up, right? So you got to think in terms of long term, building that foundation, because you're creating this memorable experience for her that what that she's not going to forget. She may try to push, push it into the back of her mind, but her body will not forget, right? Like, you can create these uh, memories within a woman's body that, this is, what I'm this is the deep part I'm talking about, that you don't really have to even touch her because her body is responding to the energy that you're emitting that doesn't even require verbal exchange, right? just by her seeing you, right? So, not rushing in too quick, creating that mental stimulation that triggers her body to respond in a certain way. And you can see, like, the changes in her body as a result of you stimulating her on the mental level. And it takes a while don't think it can just happen like that by you just spewing out some freaking intellectual words, right? Being verbose in your verbal expression. I don't think it's that like that simple. It's really like you getting to know her and knowing, like being able to pick up and respond. That's where emotional intelligence comes in. And from that, not rushing in too quickly to make it turn into something physical, right? Like, patience is truly a virtue in this. Making her want you. See, a lot of men haven't perfected that shit. Some men have. I think very, very few men have reached a point to be able to perfect, like, the waiting game. 
I know a lot of men are like, what the fuck is she talking about? Waiting. I'm not about to like wait for some sex. I can just go ahead and go right in. But I'm, I'm putting y'all up on game. Maybe I shouldn't even be telling y'all this. On how to like, like this, this is a game. This is game that I'm giving on how to snatch a woman's heart, right? A lot of men already know this, but yeah, like making her want you essentially more than you want her. Not to say you don't want her. You can definitely want her, but making her wait because you know that she's ready. And I'm saying like, this is in the moment, right? This is all like in the moment of one interaction, one exchange, like the same time, the same day, right? That you've built this up and this is like called foreplay. Foreplay is not necessarily rubbing her feet or giving her a massage or, I mean, that could be part of it, but foreplay goes deeper than that. Foreplay begins with just phone conversation, making thoughtful uh, remarks, sending her kind gestures, right? That's like building up to that moment because you're tearing down those barriers. You're tearing down that wall that exists between you and her. And this happens over time. But when you're in that moment, when I say in the moment, like you're face to face with her, right? You guys are in, you're sharing the same space and time. And you can look at her and see that her defenses are down. Because you've gotten to that point to, to mentally stimulate her, right? Which impacts her on a phys physiological level. But you don't necessarily make a move. A lot of men will go and make a move right then and there, right? You don't make a move, though. Like when I say make a move, like don't take it to a physical level where like you're touching her or rubbing her. Like, no. Slow it down. Right? Like, slow it all the way down. And you can, like, you look at her body, though, but you're still connecting with her, like, on a spiritual, like, psychological level. But you're seeing that, like, her body is just, like, going deeper into this sense of craving you and you kind of playing on that right you like you're playing with that in that moment and slowly you can make advances right slowly make advances but not quite not not all the way in may i ex i explore the tantric aspect of it so say more stanley you say you explore the tantric aspect of it and so then when you do advance and, and go into the physical realm of connecting with her, right? You still, it's not to the point where you're just taking off her clothes and, and your clothes. It's just like progressively you become one with her on a physical level by touching her in certain places right but not even like not not right in her private parts necessarily right there's so certain like erogenous zones that we all know about that you can further help stimulate that arousal phase within her and a lot of men think that oh you gotta you just eat her out and she's gonna be like pouring out gushing out you know um gushing out, you know, fluids or whatever, like making her really wet, um, or lubrication, shall I say, right? And it's just like, okay, that's one way, but you don't even have to, like, give a woman oral sex to get her to that point where she is just, like, drenching, like, she's pouring out. I'm giving you guys, I'm putting you up on game, I'm giving you guys the secret. I want you to say more. You mentioned that you explore the tantric aspect of it. Go and say more. What do you mean by that? Um, but you can see like her body in that moment, like she, she's craving, she's, she's like almost, she's craving you. And then you can almost see like the desperation, right? And she's like, probably at this point, defenseless. She's just kind of let go. She's ready. She's like open, right? But you still don't go in, right? Like this is how you can create a buildup to a true orgasm because an orgasm is really in the mind i don't think people understand that and where is the mind the mind is really in your dna it's throughout your entire body 
You ran away. What happened? <laughs> you couldn't really explain what you meant. You're just using words. You don't know what it means. <laughs> But yeah, then she's at the point where she's like desperately fiending. She's like, probably to the point of even asking you. See, men don't even have to worry about the whole Me Too thing in this moment, right? Because she'll be at the point where she's asking you for it. So you don't have to worry about, oh, worry about, oh, consensual sex. Oh, I don't want to touch her inappropriately. I don't want to have sex with her. Like, Yo, she's going to be asking you for it. You got to, like, get a woman to the point where she's, like, damn near pulling your penis out because she's so, like, she's so ready. She's, like, ready. She's in there in that moment. But you have to usher her into that. And I think it takes, obviously, it takes patience. It takes discipline. A lot of men just aren't that disciplined to that point. They're just like, all right, my dick is hard. I'm ready to fuck. You say, um, tantric sex is a whole new way of being in sexual connection that allows you access to deeper levels of feeling, sensation, and energy, and ultimately more of who you really are. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's pretty much what I'm saying. I mean, there are labels for many different things, but I'm just saying in terms of being able to connect to a woman. Like, yo, you can literally bring about an orgasm in a woman almost without touching her. Right, and so imagine when she's at the point where she's desperately craving you to touch her in certain ways, right? And then you do, yo, <laughs> she that you touching her probably just like on her back is gonna make her orgasm. And I experienced that, like a woman can experience an orgasm without intercourse necessarily, but even when it reaches the point of intercourse. And the penis is inserted into the beautiful, wet, warm flower. It's going to be so magical, yo. Like, sex is an art, but it really is a science, too. It's really a science. It's a way to have a woman just dripping wet. You cannot even, like, touch her. You can have her sitting on a counter. And some men have perfected this by just looking at her. But it's not just any look. Because a man can be sexy and it can elicit a certain reaction within a woman on a physiological level. Just based off his looks, right? I think that's kind of cheating, though. Let's say a man isn't physically attractive, right? Because I think that's kind of cheating. If a man is just fucking drenching in fucking handsomeness, then... Okay, yeah, it probably would make a woman wet because it's kind of conjuring up ideas in her mind. And, you know, I think a woman can go to the point of, like, seeing a, a beautiful man just as men do women, right? We see the, the, the physical beauty, and then our mind begins to go down this own path of its own, like, with its own fantasy. And that fantasy that is created kind of sets the tone for that physiological stimulation in a way so it's like she's participating in her own arousal um through what she's visualizing by looking at this beautiful beholding this beautiful sight but what if a man isn't that physically attractive right i think even a man who isn't as physically attractive can definitely take hold of a woman on that level to that extent and he is not even touching her, you know, but it takes time to build up. So I'm curious to hear like your perspective guys and girls tell me what is it? Because we all have different things that get us off. But for me, I'm definitely on that level. And so when I think about that conversation I had with my friend, I'm just like, ah, oh, that's not going to work for me, yo. That's definitely not going to work for me. But, I mean, I'm open to different perspectives. You know, I like to engage in these kinds of conversations, you know, because it's interesting. But 
being in charge of my own orgasm? No. Nah. If that's the case, I don't need a man. What what point does a what purpose does a man serve with a woman if she is in charge of her own orgasm? That shit can be kind of cool though, right? Because he mentioned like a female masturbating and he likes to get off on that. And I'm like, yeah. Like that kind of taps into exhibitionism, which is another one of my fetishes, right? Um, just, you know, pleasuring myself or even being naked and just like knowing that a person is observing me and watching me and me being in control of their stimulation. That shit is a turn on. I give you a turn on. Like, I make the joke a lot where I say that <laughs> long before I took this path of becoming a psychologist, like, I remember growing up, I wanted to be a stripper. And it's not that, oh, I'm a freak. It's just something about being in control of a person's uh, arousal, sexual arousal, and, and knowing that you control that, right? You can make it go up, you can make it go down, and... You know, it's like being a tease in front of a person um, and, you know, being kind of in control of their lust, right? Because you are triggering, you know, lust within them um, because the only thing they can do is just look, right? They can't touch. They can't have sex with you. They're just looking at you, right? And so in that same vein, masturbating in front of a person with the restriction of you can't touch, but you can just watch, that can be a, a major turn on, I think, for a person who is an exhibitionist. Um, but I was gonna say, what was I gonna say? You say it can help, what can help? So, Oh, yeah, and, like, bondage, too. It's, like, there's so many levels to this. But, yeah, going back to... Oh, yeah, so I was I was saying, like, yeah, being in control of my own work is, like, yeah, what, what purpose is uh, that a man will serve in that perspective? Like, right? But it also made me think, like, okay, a man that would say something like that... <laughs> a man, I think, who would most likely say that he wants a woman to be in control of her own orgasm... Do you think a man like that will be beta or alpha? I would say beta. Now, what do you guys think? I say beta. And not only beta, but it's kind of giving me, and listen, I don't mean to be offensive at all. I'm just saying, though, you guys, come on, you guys know I like to analyze shit. I can't help it, right? But it makes me think that this person, it's, it's, like, it's like giving me like little dick energy, yo. Because big dick energy don't talk like that. Big dick. Not to say like dudes with big dicks wouldn't just want to sit back and just let a woman have at it, right? But no, a lot of big dick energy, they like to be in control of their orgasm and her orgasm. I mean, it's like, it goes, it's like, it's, it's automatic for them to make a woman come. Orgasm is a different story, though, because most women, even with big dick energy, do not orgasm. That's a special type of touch right there. And yes, you know, there is a G-spot within a woman that can trigger an orgasm, which a lot of men don't know where it is. And even if they do, they aren't really that sophisticated and in tune with the woman's body to stimulate the G-spot in that way. But that G-spot definitely can be triggered, I think, on a mental, psychological level, which I was saying earlier, though. Different ways to touch that G-spot without physically touching that G-spot. But, yeah, it's kind of giving me, like, little dick energy. I mean, listen, it's not your fault. If, you know, I'm not saying this to be offensive. If you're watching this and you can identify with little dick energy or whatever, then okay, 
everyone has their ways of getting off. And you've learned and you've come to an acceptance that you're not the one to do it in that way to a woman. You're not the one to stimulate her, to penetrate her in that way. The only thing that you can do to a woman is sit back and allow her to <laughs> be in control of her own orgasm. <laughs> Or, you know, you help her orgasm with the help of a, a vibrator. You guys hear noise in the background? That is a dryer. I am doing laundry. Um, but let's talk. Like, let's talk like adults, you know. Keep it real. Like, a lot of men, this is what I know, it's a lot of white men. Like, yo, they unashamedly admit that they are not well endowed. And they have accepted it, you know. But I feel like there's many ways to let a woman know that you ain't packing down there. And I feel like that's one way. When he said that, it was just like, oh, I prefer to let a woman be in charge of her own orgasm. I'm like, <laughs> enough said. <laughs> enough said. But she, who knows? What was the motherfucker packing down there? Like, mm, never know, never know. I would say, again, you both alpha or beta approach. Beta energy. It's not an approach. Yo, alpha and beta, they're not approaches. It's just, it is what it is. It's not an approach. An approach is something that you have control over that you can change. If you're a beta, you just beta. you alpha, you just alpha. Like, that's something you can't change. You don't choose to be beta or alpha. That's just what you are. <laughs> Inherently. You get what I'm saying? Uh, beta energy is having to force... An alpha is making a woman feel empowered and a level to initiate her true desires without having to apply that pressure. I wouldn't say that. I don't know. Maybe that's your interpretation of what beta and alpha energy is, but I wouldn't say that's necessarily beta and alpha. I mean, you think of what an alpha is. An alpha is a leader of the pack, yo. I mean, alpha men obviously get a lot of sex. They get a lot of, you know, women. Um, beta men can too, though. Not to say beta men don't get women, right? And haven't had their share, their fair share. But it is a type of energy that reflects upon the dynamic of a relationship with a woman. And not only that, but their dynamic in relation to other men. Alpha men are alpha. I'm going to say, who texted me? Alpha men are the head of the pack, right? You know, like, they're the dominant ones in their pack. In any pack, for that matter, really. Um, and they are not afraid to take control when it comes to relationship dynamics. Like, that, it comes natural for them. You know, beta men tend to be more passive. You know, they're more receptive. I'm not saying they don't make good partners. They do. A lot of times, alpha men, they have trouble in relationship because of that surplus of dominant energy. And it can come off as narcissistic. It's like their way or the highway kind of thing. But that's just what I'm attracted to. Because they know what they want. They know how to take charge. And, and they do it. Shit gets done with alpha men and, and dominant men. Um, they're not waiting on a woman to take the lead, you know, to initiate anything in the relationship for that matter they are the initiators in relationships like alpha men are initiators dominant men are initiators in relationships and that's the shit that turned me the fuck on not to say i can't take the lead not to say i can't initiate of course <laughs> but it's what turns me on what get, gets my wheels turning you know is that type of energy you say alpha is dominant and lead and beta are more of a follower where they must prove their dominance in a cocky manner. I guess, but yeah, it's just, it's definitely a different vibe. Um, I have dated both beta and alpha and I just realized that, yeah, I resonate more with alpha men. I, my relationship with alpha men is more intense. Like my last relationship was with the alpha male. Um, but not all alpha men got big dicks though. <laughs> Let's be clear on that. 
So, and not necessarily all beta men got small dicks. So, can't, it's not that cut and dry or black and white. Um, but yeah, that statement is just kind of giving me like, um, I don't know, little dick energy. It's just like, okay. I understand. You gotta like go with what works for you. And, you know, a person, a man being experienced, right, sexually experienced, like, I'm pretty sure he probably knows his own personal experience, like, what works for him. Um, it's crazy because I feel bad for some men, like, when they feel insecure about their penis size. And with their smaller penis size, like, they're not able to fully pleasure a woman how they would like, let alone how the woman would like. Um, not able to keep the penis inside for some reason. It just keeps falling out. and <laughs> They just have trouble with performance, right? They lack in the, the performance department. And so, in turn, it makes sense why they would want a woman to perform. Because they're not good at that. But on that note, I am going to end this video here. I've said what I had to say to get the conversation going. I'm interested in hearing what you guys think about this. Feel free to share uh, some tricks to the trade on what is conducive to orgasms in your department. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. No harm, no pun intended for no one watching this. Because I know a lot of people are very, very sensitive <laughs> when it comes to their inadequacy, especially in the freaking bedroom. But listen, it's not my fault. Do not blame me, okay? <laughs> Sip my wine. <laughs> Good night, guys. Oh, what do you say? A comment just popped up. I come across beta men who down other men and advertise the idea of having big dick energy. Alphas never will down another man to show off in front of women. Your aura is enough to prove. I guess that's one way of looking at it, but I'll catch you guys later. Have a great night. Love you guys.